Further to my questions about Saskatoon bushes, what can we do to enhance slash help wild foraging foods? I'm close to free crown land and come across a patch of say thimble berries, but they're being choked out by thistle. How can I enhance the berries and not the thistles? Uh, love your saying about land drunk. <laughs> That's me. I've lived on, I've lived all my life in Alberta, mostly Southern Alberta. And now I'm on the other side of the Rockies, the warm side, going to town to uh, a lot. Six plus acres is overwhelming. Land drunk e equals land drunk. Thank you for all your leadership. Permaculture is the answer af after love. So yeah, kind of on Saskatoon bushes. So the first off, the, the land drunkness, that was actually, that's Rob saying. I, oh, uh, is it? <laughs> um, but, uh, and, and he first, um, uh, when he first said it, I was just, it blew me away. Cause, cause like, you know, touring these like small urban properties in town, they're so tight and they're and like every square inch has to be you know, like your property, Curtis. And then you get to my place and it's like, well, I got so much room. I can, I can afford to be inefficient. I can, yeah. you know, I got do overs and it just, it just breeds shitty design <laughs> um so the, I'm, I'm not too familiar with uh with thimble bear we don't have them growing here uh so but the, um, the the whatever species you're trying to propagate again the, the process the, the same is just you know do some research into what what that plants kind of needs and yields are in terms of of you know the uh it's a you know a standard kind of permaculture design method and understand like does it does it come up after a fire? Does it require disturbance? Uh, you know, is it is it uh, an edge species or is it like a shade species? Uh, um, you know, different things like that. So, for example, like Saskatoon, in uh, in our area, what what I've noticed just from observing kind of patterns is typically it's it's on like the edge of forests. Like, uh, like for me, it's, we have a lot of poplar forests here. And so I, I find these, they're, they're kind of, um, they're, they're the uh, advanced stage of, of, a, of a forest succession uh, in, in, healthy, in healthy soils. If you've got like salty soil or something like that, you'll have different species. But um, so like they like to live on the, on the edge. They, uh, they don't mind disturbance. They do sucker and, and they do typically kind of grow in, in clumps. And so one of the, um, the, I, I've never played around with this, but I, I think, for, particularly for Saskatoons, one of the things you could do would be to uh, coppice old species and uh, like or sorry, old plants, and then keep the young ones. Because from looking at like our wild patches on our farm, they tend to kind of like overgrow themselves, and then they kind of die. Uh, versus, and, and they just kind of smother themselves out, and, and you don't get any uh, production. Versus if you were to go in there and like thin them, uh, you'd, you'd create more light and you'd probably get more production that way. And Saskatoon is a fantastic wood. I use it for, for smoking my meats. I also use it for tool handles. It's a really uh, flexible, but strong tool handle. Um, and but you could also use it for firewood as well. So that would be one thing I would do particularly for, for something like Saskatoon. Something like raspberry, on the other hand, I would actually create disturb or like blackberry in your area. Like it needs disturbance uh, and, and like fire and stuff like that. Now you might not have the ability to do that. So maybe you can spread wood ashes down to create those same kind of, uh, um, you know, pulses in the soil that, that trigger the germination of those seeds. So yeah, really it's just like understand what, what the plant needs, what its role is in within the ecological succession and then figure out how you can you can get in there to uh, to do some management. Uh, an, another fantastic one that I, I, I haven't heard anybody talk about is stinging nettle. Uh, it's one of my favorite uh, wild foraging plants. It's absolutely delicious, particularly Super in the food. spring. Yeah, it's it's way better than, than spinach in my opinion. It's like this. It's like a meaty flavor, and it's one of the first things up. Uh, so if, if you don't have a greenhouse. Uh, or anything like that like it can be it can extend your season you know a month into the um you know ahead of everything else and um and the roots are edible as well i've never eaten the roots myself